Do you have a lot of tension or even pain in the front of your hips? Most think it's due to tightness in your hip flexor muscles, but if you're someone who's been stretching your hip flexors over and over again without lasting results, then you may be wasting your time. In this video, I'm gonna show you a few tests so you can really determine if your hip flexors are truly tight versus the other more common issue. Then I'm gonna show you three moves to help you resolve that tension for good, with the last movement being my all-time favorite move to loosening up my own hips. So, let's dive in. The first test we're gonna do is what we call the Thomas test. This will help us determine if our hip flexors are actually the culprit of what's going on in our hips. And all you need for this is a place to lie down. I'm using a bench, which you can find at the gym, or you can simply use a bed at home. And to start this, we're gonna sit on the edge of the bench or if you're sitting on a bed at home. And let's say I wanna test my left side first. I'm gonna hug my right knee towards my chest and I'm gonna slowly just rock backwards here. And what we're looking for is what this left leg does. So if my thigh stays nice and parallel here, then we know hip flexor tension is not my biggest issue. If you're testing this yourself and you're not able to get to that parallel and you're kind of stuck up here, then you know that hip flexor tension is super tight and it may actually be your culprit. But a good majority of you will be able to pass this test on both sides to where that thigh stays nice and parallel. So then again, we can cross hip flexors off our list of things we need to worry about. Now, if you had a positive Thompson test on one side, yet alone both sides, then this video is for you to really deal with that hip flexor tension. But for the majority of you that passed this, let me show you another test so we can really identify what's going on in the hip. So the next test we're gonna do is what we call the fade air test. That's just an acronym for flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. And this is a simple test that will help us determine if we have more of a hip impingement or a joint issue going on, which I find is way more common in practice when I see patients with hip issues. So to do this test, we just need somewhere to lie down. I'm just gonna use the bench here, but you can also do it on the ground. From here, we're gonna go through those movements. So the first one was F for flexion. So I'm just gonna hug that knee towards my chest. If I'm already feeling a little bit of pinching or even that pain sensation, then no hip impingement is your most likely culprit. And we'll get to those movements that'll help here shortly. But if you don't feel anything yet, what you do is you pull that knee across midline. And I'll show this from another angle here in a second. And then you wanna see again, is that cause any of that pinching or that pain? And then the last thing we wanna go into that internal rotation. So think about driving your heel away from you. And I even feel a little bit of pinching and discomfort. Not painful, but I can tell I could use some more joint space there. Next, I'll test my right side. What I'm gonna do is hug knee towards chest. Again, seeing if there's any pinching. I don't have anything yet. Then I'm gonna slowly drag my knee towards midline. I already feel a little bit more on this side. And then the last thing we're gonna do is go into that internal rotation or think about driving foot or heel away from us. And I actually feel a little bit more discomfort on this side. And if you had pinching or pain on one or both sides, then we know hip impingement is the more likely culprit, which just means we're running out of joint space, especially on the front side here. So to demonstrate what a hip impingement is, I'm just gonna use my fist here, since it's a ball and socket joint. When we deal with impingement, usually the joint tends to translate to one side, so then we run out of joint space. So if we're coming into, say, flexion here, or this range, the ball of the socket is running out of room and we're just jamming into the bone or the acetabulum. So we just wanna find some good movements to bring that joint to the center of the socket so then we get that nice mobility and free range of motion we're looking for. I'm going to show you a couple moves that'll help us enhance that. So the first move we're going to do is what we call a hip extension stretch. With impingement we get a lot of that closing angle discomfort where that ball is jamming into the socket so we need to create more anterior joint space and this is one of my favorite ways to do that. So let's say I'm starting with my left side here I'm gonna get into what we call a half kneeling position where we're at 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. And this is a very similar setup to an actual hip flexor stretch. So a traditional hip flexor stretch, you think of posteriorly pelvic tilt, or I think of tucking my tail between my legs. So you feel some tension here, drive forward, feel that tension. It's a good stretch if it's a hip flexor issue. But to create more joint space, we wanna drive more extension into that joint. So what that looks like is taking just a wider step here, and we're actually gonna go more into an anteriorly pelvic tilted position. That's gonna help relax the hip flexor muscle. 
And then from here, we're gonna drive our pelvis forward. And you can see I'm getting a lot of that hip extension range, which is what we're looking for. So this stretch might be a little bit more pinpoint to the actual hip joint, which is good. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to stretch out those deep capsule fibers, again, creating more of that joint space. So for this, I'm gonna do a solid 10 reps, and I'll show it from the other side, where I'm trying to go further and further with each rep. If you have any discomfort with this, don't be a hero. If you have any discomfort, just give it a smooch, come right back. And as you rep this out, you should be able to open up that range, especially over time. So from the right side, if I'm starting in this half kneeling position, I'm gonna take a wider step, anteriorly pelvic tilt, driving pelvis forward, getting a nice hip extension stretch, creating more of that anterior joint space so our joints have more freedom to roam. You'd be surprised at how quickly this can help take away some of your discomfort. So on this side, we're gonna do a solid 10 reps. And if you can, you can kind of just pulse your reps at the end range here. You don't have to come out of it every single time. So if you're on a time crunch or you're doing this for a gym warm up, make sure to get these suckers in. So there was move number one. Most of you should be able to do that no problem, but there'll be a handful of you that aren't super comfortable when getting on your knees. So for the second move, I'm gonna show you a standing version. So if you have any knee issues or you wanna be able to stretch, say at work, where it's not super easy to get on the ground, then this moves for you. So what we're gonna do is go up against a wall, door, just a flat surface to hold on to. And let's say I wanna stretch out my right side first. We're just gonna be doing a standing hip extension stretch. So first, what I'm gonna do is find my balance against the wall. Then I'm gonna take my hand and just squeeze around my pelvic bone here. And what this stretch is, is just driving your heel behind you or getting that hip extension. But the reason I'm putting my hand here is I don't want you to do it from your lumbar spine. So you'll see it looks like I'm getting hip extension, but if you feel the tilt of your pelvis, if it tilts forward, then you know you're just getting that range from your spine and it's not stretching your hip at all. So to start, you're gonna do like a mini posterior pelvic tilt position. You're gonna hold, then you're gonna drive that heel behind you without that tipping, and then you're gonna rep out a good 10 to 15 of these. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you can, you wanna see if you can go further and further. And if you don't have much discomfort with this one, you can even get ballistic with it, kind of whipping your heel or think about kicking someone behind you without letting that pelvis dump. From the front here, I'll hold on to the squat rack. Again, just driving into that hip extension, doing a couple reps just to see what my range is. And then if it's too easy, then I'm gonna whip it and try to kick behind me. Just make sure you're not too close to a wall or some coworkers when you're doing this. So there's move number two. Now there's no excuses for all of you not to be able to get some hip extension range to open up that anterior joint space. But I promise I'm gonna give you my all time favorite move for opening up the joint. And I'm gonna show you that next. So for this last move, we need a medium weight preferably a kettlebell because it's easier to hold on to the horn. So what we're gonna be performing is what we call half kneeling kettlebell weight shifts. I know that's a mouthful, but let me show you what it looks like. So if I'm starting in this half kneeling position, I'm gonna widen my stance where my knee tracks out at about a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna hold on to the kettlebell. Then from here, what I'm gonna do is think about driving my knee over my toe, and this will help open up a good groin stretch on this side, and I'm getting a little bit of that hip extension on the bottom side here. So I'm gonna keep going until I feel a good stretch, then I'm gonna rock out, and then you guessed it, rock back in, and we're gonna do a good 10, maybe even 15 of these. The reason why we hold on to the weight as we get further into it, that weight kind of sinks you into that stretch even more. So if you don't feel that weight guiding you, then grab a heavier weight and you'll definitely feel it. So from the other angle, I'm gonna do my right side now. I'm gonna come into that half kneeling position. I'm gonna track out at 45 degrees. I'm gonna pick up that kettlebell and then I'm gonna go knees over toes and really sinking into that stretch. I can tell I'm a lot tighter on this right side. I'm gonna pulse it a little bit and then come right back out. And then, like I mentioned already, we're gonna perform a good 10 to 15 of these. And for extra credit, if you start by doing your set of hip extension stretch, you can follow it up with these weight shifts and you'll be surprised at how buttery smooth your hips are after you combo these two. After performing these stretches, some of you will notice instant results. So let's say before these movements, you checked your deep squat to see how your hips feel. If you felt any impingement or pinchy type sensation or even pain, 
You could test your squat before and then test it afterwards doing these moves. And if you have a hip impingement issue, it should open up some more space so you can at least get deeper into that position before you run into your symptoms. Now, for those of you that did a few of these movements and didn't see much change in either your movements or your symptoms afterwards, well, hip impingements don't happen overnight. They usually are a compounding effect, especially based on our postures and positions where we're hip flexion dominant creatures. So what you would wanna do is perform at least 30 reps of one of these movements that work best for you. Now with that 30 reps per day, what you would wanna do is do 10 in the morning, 10 in the evening, and sneak some in right around lunchtime. And you wanna do that for about two weeks. Two weeks is a long enough time period to know if you're making change. So for those of you that had say chronic issues where this has been going on for say more than three months or even years, most of you won't get that instant relief. Some of you will, which is great, but I just want you to know that this is something you gotta build into a routine. And the more you do it, the more you open it up and the better you'll feel if you stay consistent. Do you ever experience back pain when doing bridges or thrust? then this next video is for you.